Hey there ladies and gentlemen, Juan Romero here from Switch Watch back with another review. This is Giraffe and Anika on the Nintendo Switch. Sit back, relax, let's get into this one. I want to thank Jason for helping to put the script together for this review. Have you ever watched a trailer for a video game and immediately knew everything about it before ever playing it? Well, that's what Giraffe and Anika was for us. As soon as we finished watching the Japanese trailer, we had a somber feeling come over us because we knew deep down the experience that we were about to have here. But we're not here to talk about how we judged the book by its cover. And let us tell you about why and how we judged the whole game after playing it through to completion and whether or not it's worth your hard-earned cash, and if you should dive in or not. Here in the story, you play as Anika, one of the titular characters, as soon as you meet Giraffe, the other half of the title, who asks you for help in saving the world of sorts by collecting three gems after you've banged your head and woken up in a world you do not recognize. Well, to be perfectly honest, the story is equal parts simple to the point, and also convoluted and a little bit silly. Somewhere deep inside of Giraffe and Anika, we have a sweet story of longing and separation, but somehow that simple narrative is muddied by nonsensical world beyond boring NPCs that add very little to this narrative and tiring journeys through some of the worst dungeons we've ever played in a video game. Let's jump into the gameplay where this takes a pacifist approach. You'll at no point learn or use actions to attack. And when traversing through dungeons, you'll come across ghosts who can attack you, but you have no way of defending yourself. You simply need to avoid them as best you can. As Anika completes dungeons, she earns mundane abilities that allow her to access more of the island. Basic abilities like jumping, swimming and running are locked behind a progression system similar to a Metroidvania game. And this makes the small world of Giraffe and Anika feel even smaller. I would separate the gameplay into three different sections because it is hard to judge them all together. Firstly, we have a story based adventure game. Secondly, we have a frustrating and unfair 3D platformer. And finally, we have a rhythm game that feels randomly placed in the game for no reason at all. The story-based adventure is somewhat enjoyable area of Giraffe and Anika, but that is honestly not saying a whole lot. It's quite the linear adventure and you simply trying to figure out the mystery where you are and the importance of these gems that Giraffe asks you to help collect. Anika does not really go much further than that with her thinking. It's as if she is unfazed by the bizarre world around her and the strange task immediately thrown in her direction. She feels a bit too one-dimensional for a story that does lean on some heavy topics at times and it's difficult to take her or the situation at hand seriously. The platforming, however, is just horrible. The way Anika moves feels like a bad PS1 era 3D platformer and some areas of the game contain difficulty curves so extreme that it feels like a completely different game at times. Most of the dungeons require Anika to jump and dodge in such a way that you would expect the controls to be both precise and fluid and neither of those elements exist here. Later dungeons require way too much precision jumping for a game that does not allow its players precise controls. And that, my friends, just leads to utter frustration. It's pretty much unforgivable here. Finally, we come to the rhythm section of the game, which is delivered by the dungeon boss. Each boss, if that's what you want to call them here, performs a magical dance that throws balls of light that you need to hit with a timely manner or else you take damage. You also need to dodge left and right to periodically avoid magical attacks that are coming your way, but it is honestly not that hard. There are three settings prior to each battle that allows you to play the rhythm game in easy, medium or hard, and we found that there's very little difference between easy and medium throughout the game, but hard does offer a decent challenge for those looking for some fun, rhythmic gameplay. One of the key takeaways is that the rhythm side of the game felt so fluid that it makes me think that the developers created a rhythm game and then kind of built an adventure around it. At no point in the game did the story imply Anika or anyone else of importance enjoyed music or dancing, but they were random themes 
throughout this game. And we guessed that they had to be because the boss fights were heavily focused on music, rhythm and dancing. The only problem with this approach is that the rhythm parts of the game were so few and far between and they didn't last more than a couple of minutes each. This means that Giraffe and Anika leans more on its adventuring and platforming, the two lesser parts of the game, and neglects to utilize rhythm, its best asset. Whatever the reason is for the decision, you cannot deny the huge disconnect that the rhythm parts have with the rest of this game. You would think that if the rhythm battles were one of the best parts of the game, the music would follow, but unfortunately, the soundtrack is bland and pretty much forgettable. Every section of the game, including the cute storyboard used for storytelling, lacks memorable music to give each of the important areas more life. Throughout the game, there are collectibles in the form of Meowster pieces, and they're essentially amateur drawings of cats. And these drawings range from pretty good to really bad, and it's such a weird thing to collect. You'd think that collecting these is purely optional. We do wish that certain items were not necessary, but the game expects you to remember all of the obscure areas of the island where coloured item doors do exist, even inside the caves and houses that you never even need to enter. It is a strange design choice, again, especially after you gain the ability to jump and can clearly jump over fences where locked colours doors restrict. Since there are invisible walls in place, you're not able to make the full leap, but it does look strange and doesn't make sense physically. Another poor design choice is the in-game clock. Although it makes sense to a degree, it mostly restricts progression and simply adds more steps to a task. A carpenter ghost can build the bridge at night. Well, I guess you have to run home real quick and sleep until evening. A dressmaker requires three days to make your new dress. Okay, we'll just sleep in her bed for three straight days. There isn't any punishment for doing this either, so why does it even exist? The game even has beds all over the place to encourage sleeping until a certain time, but why not eliminate this mechanic completely if you make it so easy to deem it meaningless? From a technical standpoint, Giraffe and Anika suffers from a tremendous amount of glitches, design issues and graphical problems. For starters, riding on objects like floating platforms and boats can result in some insane rubber banding where Anika will shoot across the screen to her death. Also, while riding, Anika will bounce off a certain object in such a way that it can easily throw her off, plummeting to her death. NPCs, while moving, will glide on the floor and do not follow their footstep patterns at all. And they even move a weirdly fast walking speed that makes it look even more awkward. Sadly, I couldn't spend 20 minutes on technical issues, but I think you get the point. It's full of them unfortunately the visuals for the most part really do look quite good but there are certain character models that are ugly and lack character it does look like the development team spent a lot more time on certain areas than on others and it really does show throughout uh, we do wish the team had spent as much time on other npcs as they did on anika's model because she really does stand out and look super cute sadly as you can tell from the theme of the negativity in this review you know, the bad simply outweighs the good pretty much in every department. And that's no different when you consider the price of entry here, which is $29.99 digitally and all 50 bucks when you're considering physically. And the game lasts about five hours. Honestly, it's really hard to find any redeeming features to recommend it at this price. And even when your kids are playing this, which ours did they were pretty much bored very very quickly asking us to turn the game off if you are desperate to play this however and don't mind the high entry fee we are sorry this isn't the review you're looking for this is something that we recommend you definitely wait for a heavy sale on before investing a four out of ten from us ladies and gentlemen Please do let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Leave us a like if you enjoyed this video. And if you are new here and you want reviews, list videos that come out every Sunday and Monday, then make sure you subscribe. We'd love to see you on our next video. My name is Juan Romero. Thank you to Jason again for helping put this script together. I really do appreciate it. And thank you all for watching. Take care, everyone. See you on the next one.